In this video, we're going to consider a router on a stick. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and a router on a stick is going to allow us to forward traffic between different VLANs on a layer two switch, a switch that does not have internal routing capabilities. And we're gonna begin by taking a look at this need for having a router on a stick, which in some literature is called a router on a trunk. And after we understand the use case, we'll take a look at the theory of exactly how it works. It's going to involve a trunk and sub interfaces. And after we talk about how it works in theory, we're going to go out to some live gear and set this up. And by the way, this video is a sample from a course that I currently have in production. It's my new CCNA video training series. Now at the time of this recording, Cisco still has not updated the exam blueprint for the 200-301 exam. It's still on version 1.0. However, I'm creating a brand new course from scratch. So when the version 1.1 updates come out, I'll be able to update this brand new course. And you might be wondering why I'm taking the time to create a course from scratch that I already have. And actually, the inspiration comes from Taylor Swift. No kidding. By the way, here's a picture of my daughter at the Eras Tour up in Cincinnati. She was actually able to be on the front row. But the reason I bring up Taylor is because of what she did with some of her albums. You see, the rights to her albums belong to a producer, and she wanted to take ownership of her own music. And I'm in a similar situation with my CCNA video training series. Yes, I created a CCNA course a few years back that still maps to the current blueprint, but the rights to that content belong to a producer. And that's going to limit what I can do with this content when the 1.1 update comes along. So I decided to completely recreate it from scratch and making lots of additions and improvements along the way. And after Taylor Swift re-records and re-releases her version of the album, it's called Taylor's Version. So I suppose you could call this course CCNA Kevin's Version. And right now it's in production. And at the time of this recording, it's over 50% done. But the only way to currently get access to this course is to be a member of my All Access Pass. The All Access Pass is a subscription where you pay just $29 a month and you get access to our entire library of on-demand courses, including this in production CCNA video training series. And if you'd like to check out all of the training available in the All Access Pass, I invite you to go to kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. That's kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. Now let's take a look at this concept called a router on a stick. If we have a layer two switch, in other words, it's not able to make forwarding decisions based on layer three information, then we might have a challenge if we want to pass traffic from one VLAN to another VLAN. And by the way, this is recapping something we talked about earlier in this lesson. We said that we might have a sales VLAN with a subnet of 172.16.1.0/24. Maybe we've got an engineering VLAN of 192.168.1.0/24. And we've got PCs connected to each of those VLANs. If I wanted to pass traffic from one PC to another PC, that's not going to be happening by itself on a layer two switch. And the reason is a layer two switch can take ports and group them into different subnets or different VLANs or broadcast domains. However, a layer two switch by itself cannot route traffic from one VLAN to the other. That's the job of a router or layer three switch, which sometimes we call a multi-layer switch. And we mentioned earlier in this lesson that one possible solution was to use a router on a stick. You might see that in the literature abbreviated as ROAS, or in some literature, you might see that referred to as a router on a trunk, but we're talking about the same thing here. We can use an external router to make that routing decision for us. And we can do this with a single interface. We can take one interface from the switch and run it to one interface in the router and configure that link to be a trunk link We'll need to do some configuration on the router and some configuration on the switch. But once it's a trunk link, it's going to carry traffic for multiple VLANs. For example, let's say our sales PC wants to talk to the engineering PC. Notice what's going to happen. It's going to go down to the router. It's going to get routed back up to the engineering VLAN and then go out to the PC with the IP address of 192.168.1.154. But let's go through that again and zoom in on exactly what's happening here. We've got our sales PC that goes into the switch. And if we were to zoom in on that trunk connection, we're going to see that there's actually a path inside of that trunk that's carrying a VLAN 10 traffic and a path that's carrying VLAN 20 traffic. So is the VLAN 10 traffic from sales 
comes down from the switch to the router, it's going to go over a sub interface in that router. What I mean is we're going to take one physical interface and we're going to subdivide it into multiple sub interfaces. And each sub interface is going to be associated with a VLAN. And each sub interface is going to have an IP address that's going to be the default gateway for the devices on that VLAN. So for example, if the sales VLAN had a default gateway of 172.16.1.1, that would be the IP address of this sub interface that we're going to create in the router. So we come in on the VLAN 10 sub interface and the router says, oh, it looks like you're destined for the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. Let me send you back up this trunk, this time using the VLAN 20 path. And when that goes into the switch, the switch says, oh, this is traffic for VLAN 20 and it looks like it's going to this PC. That's the way that a router on a stick works. Now let's go out to live topology and go through the configuration. And in this demonstration, let's assume that switch SW1 is a layer 2 switch, meaning it cannot make layer 3 forwarding decisions by itself. It needs to rely on an external router. And we're going to connect to that external router, R1, via a trunk connection. Now trunks, we're going to discuss that later in this module, but for now just realize that a trunk has the ability to carry traffic for more than one VLAN. And by the way, this topology is just an extension of the topology that we worked with when we were doing a VLAN configuration. So the PCs and the servers, they are already assigned to the appropriate VLANs based on our previous configuration. But now we want to route between those VLANs. Maybe we want PC1 to be able to reach server 2. Let's see if that's possible right now. Can I ping from PC1? Can I ping 172.16.1.200? We'll give it a few seconds because it might be doing an ARP, trying to learn the MAC address of this IP address. But I think enough time has passed now. I'm going to break out of this. We had 100% packet loss. That's not good. But it's not surprising because we've not yet configured this router on a stick. Let's begin on router R1. We'll go into global configuration mode. And in interface gig 0 slash 1, which is the interface connecting down to switch SW1, let's administratively bring this interface up. Because on a router, unlike a switch, these interfaces are down by default. So we'll say no, shut down to bring that up. Now let's start carving this physical interface into multiple sub-interfaces. I'll say interface gig 0 slash 1 dot and here we could pick a number. A lot of people will start at 1. They would say gig 0 slash 1 dot 1. That would be for VLAN 10. 0 slash 1 dot 2. That would be for VLAN 20 and so on. Personally, I like to make this number a bit more meaningful. This is not required. It's just a personal preference. I like to make this number after the dot match the VLAN. It makes it easier for me to interpret the configuration. So for VLAN 10, I'm going to make my sub interface gig 0 slash 1 dot 10. And since we are acting like a trunk, I need to set the trunk encapsulation type. Pretty much all of our trunks today are using a dot 1Q trunking. However, Cisco did have, and it's still supported on some devices, they used to have their own trunk encapsulation type. It was called ISL, interswitch link. I don't want to use that. I want to make sure both sides are using dot 1Q. So I'll say, encapsulation dot one Q, and then I specify the VLAN identifier. This is going to be my sub interface for VLAN 10. This is my engineering VLAN. So we'll say dot one Q 10. And the IP address that we're going to configure is going to act as the default gateway for PC1 and for server one. And they have already been configured with this IP address as their default gateway. Let's say IP address and the default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. Let's create our other sub-interface. I'll say interface gig 0 slash 1 dot, and I'm going to use the number 20 because this is VLAN 20. Again, not required. I could number that 7 or something else, but this is going to help me remember this is for VLAN 20. We'll go into that sub-interface configuration mode, and I'll say encapsulation dot one Q, and this is VLAN 20. And by the way, when we get into our discussion of trunks, you're going to learn that there is one special VLAN on a dot one Q trunk. It's called the native VLAN. And it's the only VLAN that doesn't get a tag. All these other VLANs like 10 and 20, 
were adding four extra bytes to their frames. And part of those bytes are saying you belong to VLAN 10 or you belong to VLAN 20. But if we receive a frame that does not have that tag, it does not have those extra four bytes, what VLAN does it belong to? The VLAN configured as the native VLAN. And if this were the native VLAN, which it's not by the way, I could say, and let's use some context sensitive help, I could give the keyword of native. Now currently, I'm using the default native VLAN of 1, and I don't care about routing to or from VLAN 1. That's not what we need to do in this case. So I'm not going to set up a subinterface for VLAN 1. I just wanted to point out that I could give the native keyword if I wanted to specify that a VLAN was a native VLAN. In our case, it's not. And I'll say the IP address for this subinterface is 172.16.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. And I think we're done on the router, so let's go back to our switch. And let's go into global configuration mode and the interface or port that's getting us up to R1. That's interface gig 0 slash 0. And I want to match trunk encapsulation types. So I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation. And this does not force a port into trunk mode. It just says, oh, by the way, if you're a trunk, here's the encapsulation type to use. And I want to use dot one Q. By the way, this command might not be supported on your gear. If you're doing this, for example, in Cisco Packet Tracer, this probably won't work because a lot of devices today are only using .1Q. There's really nothing to specify here. But in my case, I'm going to specify .1Q, and we'll see later in this module that there is a way to do negotiation of a trunk between a couple of endpoints to say, hey, do you want to be a trunk? Uh, yeah, I'll be a trunk. Thanks for asking. And the trunk can be dynamically brought up by configuring just one end. We're not getting into that discussion right now. I'm just going to very simply tell this port, be a trunk. And here's how we do that. I'm going to say switch port mode instead of access, which belongs to only one VLAN. I'm going to say your mode is trunk. And that should do it. At this point, we should have a trunk going between switch SW1 and router R1 that can carry traffic for VLANs 10 and 20. And we can confirm that with a show interfaces trunk command. And I did not prune off VLAN 1 from the switch end of this trunk, but we're not routing for VLAN 1 because I did not include that as a sub interface on R1. But we are routing for VLANs 10 and 20. That's what we're concerned about. We here see the native VLAN is 1. We are currently trunking. Great. Let's go to PC1. And where this ping failed before, let's see if it works now. Let's once again try to ping server 2 from PC1. We're going to have to route for this to be successful. Let's give it a try. And look at that. We are indeed successful. I'll go ahead and break out of that. So that's a way we can do inter-VLAN routing even on a layer 2 switch. We can rely on an external router. 